Today I'm going to carry on with the demo. <coughs> so it's simple oil painting, um, basically a simple subject, something to get you started with oil painting if you're new to painting. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about colour mixing, which I talked about last week, but I just thought I'd kind of go into that in a little bit more depth. So, um, just to recap, this is the colour wheel that I suggest you, you start with. Um, if anybody would like a copy of this, I've got, these are like the blank copies, mm -hmm. and you can add the colours into the little sections. So, um, this one comes from this book uh, called Blue and Yellow Don't Make Green, which is a book that was probably sort of after I finished art school actually, so I've kind of already done quite a bit of colour mixing. Um, but it really goes into the, in quite a bit of depth how colour works, the difference between coloured lights and coloured paints or pigments. So if you're interested in going in a bit further, that's it's quite an in-depth reading. Um, and as I mentioned last week, the colour wheel that he suggests to use is this one called a colour bias wheel, um, where you've got two each of the primary colours. And each of the primary colours are slightly biased towards one of these secondary colours. So what you, you can do, um, which is a really good exercise, is to start making a few colour charts. So these are the, the greens, um, and then we've got purples and oranges. So that's quite a nice exercise. If you're unsure about how colours work, how colours mix together. And what, what I've done with these, just use this as an example is so this this line here is using the brightest or the greenest yellow you can get which is like a lemon yellow and one of the green blues so you've got a for that you've got cerulean blue there's other ones like phthalo blue and prussian blue but also green blues and by mixing those two together you get this range here depending on how much yellow you put in or how much blue but these are like the brightest greens you could get okay, by, mi by mixing colours. Um, if you were to use, say, these two, so the orangey yellow and purpley blue, you get this range here, which, you know, they're still greens, but they're a lot softer. They're a bit more like kind of late summer greens you might see. So depending on what kind of green, if you wanted a green, depending on what kind of green you wanted, you, you could either pick from this range or that range, and that's your greens to mix. So I suggest when you're starting out painting, just start with these colours and some white and maybe a little bit of brown because sometimes it's hard to mix darker colours. So I'll just show you that in a minute. Um, but this is a really good place to start. A lot of the, the some of the painting sets, they start you off with about 20 colours and it's far too many. And um, if you only ever go to the tubes of green, you don't really get to learn how to mix the greens and how to modify those greens. So, there's some lovely greens in tubes, but they're quite often you need to modify it a little bit to make it more like the green you want. Okay, so just um, to start with, say if we're going to do something like a line like that, if you're going to make, with, with colour mixing, if you're going to mix a light colour, just put a finger off, um, this, I'm put, I need to get some more of this lemon yellow because it's very old and stodgy. But if, if I was going to do something like this, this line here, um, I would say start off with a bit of pure colour with the range, and that reminds you where you started. So that bit of like the lemon yellow. And this works quite nice on, on a white paper canvas or board. Um, and then you, once you've got that, you just want to pick up the tiniest bit of the other colour, in this case the cerulean blue, and that will be far too much. Just the tiniest bit on the end of my brush will be far too much. I'll go really from here to about here in one go. So what I do is I kind of wipe most of that off the brush and uh, just what's left will be enough to get that first kind of increment. Get me on with the yellow. So that, that will get me, say, from here. Well, I'm, I'm actually probably going from about here to here. Because that is you know, probably quite too strong already. So really, with, with mixing light colours, always start with like your lightest colour and then add the darker colour, tiny bits of the darker colours. Also, the opposite is true of that. If, you, if you're mixing a dark colour, start with a dark one, just add a little bit of light. Otherwise, you can end up mi mixing tons and tons of paint, just keep, keep putting 
more and more of the other colour and just try and darken it or lighten it. So that's quite a good uh, you know, thing to sort of bear in mind. Um, the other thing is, if you're mixing something like this still light, or painting this still light, or this little landscape I have going here, sometimes you'll have some very dark areas, like this area here is, you know, dark, kind of blacky, grey, green, something like that. Um, it's not particularly good photo paper, this, so I'm not exactly sure, but I find that I'm mixing dark colour, and a lot of the starter set um, don't have black, and I, I suggest you don't use black for a while. Um, if, you, if you do want to use black, that's all well and good. Maybe wait till you've done four or five paintings, and then you can learn about mixing dark. So to mix the darker tones, um, in theory, if you mix a bit of each of these, you could get, should get something like black in the middle. So if I go some blue, um, this is actually a magenta rather than a lizard, but a dark red. <coughs> So that, that's like quite a dark tone, but that's, that's really a purple, so I need to make that a little bit more neutral. So I can add a tiny bit of this yellow that I've just used into that. Um, and that will go really more like a dark brown. So I find to get the really darkest tones, using a, a dark brown, like a burnt umber, is a good. So I've had a bit of burnt umber to that mix and a bit more of the ultramarine blue. You know, that, that's quite a nice kind of, you know, short cup of work. That, that is quite a dark, dark tone. That's probably as dark as I'm going to, going to need the painting. And you find that even if, you, if you're painting black, like say, John's got a black jumper on, um, but, uh, yeah, my t-shirt's black, it's still reflecting quite a lot of light because we're in a light environment. So you, most of the time, you, unless it's absolutely pitch black, um, most of the time you're seeing a sort of version of a grey, like a charcoal grey. So that's going to be fine for, for most painting instances. So in this um, little, little painting here that's doing these sort of darker areas, yeah, that, that might well work fine for just getting some really nice dark tones in there. So rather than go for green, that, that sort of colour might, might be quite nice. Maybe a little bit more blue with that. Um, another good tip for colour mixing is um, just getting things like, um, this is an exercise when I taught my students in the past, um, just get like a paint chart from the, the decorating shops and just see if you can mix and match specific colours. And what I use is one of these sheets of plastic and you can cut them up into little bits and then you can, you can pop that over there or if you're working from a photograph you can pop it over your photograph. And so I wanted to mix this sort of colour. Um, what I've got down here, maybe add a little bit of warmer to that and see how that works. So at the moment that's looking a bit too purpley. So I'm thinking, well, where's the colour? Um, so if colour is like too purple, it's a bit like that. And um, what I then now to make it less purple is whatever's opposite on the colour wheel. So if I had a little bit of one of the yellows in, that should go less perfectly and hopefully approach what I've got here a bit more. So I think that's closer, but it's, it's still far too light. So this is a good way of judging the tonal values, the light and dark values. Um, so I'll add some more light to that. <coughs> um, and with oil paints, they dry pretty much the same as if they're, as they're wet. As long as you don't put, if, put too much, if it's water mix of water and you put a lot of water with them, it'll change. But oil paints dry similar to how they are wet. The acrylics will dry, I think, a little bit darker. So that's something to bear in mind if you're working with acrylic. There you go. So I think actually a little bit more like that is as close as I can get. So I've managed that in like four, four takes. But and equally, you do the same. If you just want colour mixing practice, just use some paint charts. Just have them <coughs> go, go like that. Is that okay? Yeah. So, yeah. So that's really intended for anybody who's a beginner. Um, you know, like all those exercises. When I used to teach in the colleges, that would be like two weeks worth of you know beginners exercises. Um, so you know, I get to make colour wheel, do the colour charts like these.
Um, if you wanted to make one of these, sort of look like the whiteboard, a bit of masking tape, top and bottom, and then, as I say, start with a, a pure colour either end, and then just gradually add tiny bits of the other colour until you get to the other colour. That's a really good exercise. Mixing and matching sort of colour charts, mixing and matching specific colours that you something going to paint. Um, actually creating a, a, a colour wheel from one of the paints. They're all really good exercises if you're just kind of starting out. Okay. Right. <laughs>